Call the meeting order. This is the February 25th, 2014 meeting of the Fairfield Town Plan and Zoning Commission. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, executive session. Uh, the meeting minutes from February 11th, 2014. Meeting minutes from. Second. Does everybody have uh, received copies? We have uh, everybody. So all the old minutes are on. Yes. Right. So everybody, uh, everybody's voting on this item. All right. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Any corrections? No. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. The minutes are adopted unanimously. The next uh, item on our agenda is a closed executive session for discussion on pending litigation regarding 144 Tuller Road. Motion to executive session. Close executive session. I have a motion by no, second. Lessie, second by Commissioner Calgary. Have a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried. Back to order. Uh, we uh, received an update on uh, pending litigation from the town attorney. Uh, no decisions were made, and the matter will con uh, continue to be under advisement. Next item on our agenda is new applications to recommend a public hearing. The first is a zoning regulation amendment, the application of the town plan and zoning commission to amend sections 12.4.8. 13.14.4 regarding density in Commerce Drive area design district. Okay, this um, is a proposal to consider. We had sent a, uh, a memo out to you uh, explaining why uh, we think this is a, an error uh, that occurred in editing various drafts of our Commerce Drive um, amendment. Basically, as it's written now, um, particularly within the um, transit-oriented development overlay piece, there is no minimum amount of commercial area you would need to have in a uh, in a development um, um, in a mixed-use development. We had originally laid it out when it was a it's to be a 70% maximum. What do what the all right, let me back up a minute. The, the section 12.4.18 is a design commercial district regulation. Um, the Commerce Drive district is an overlay zone that refers back to that. And, and what the regulation did was increase what is a 50% floor area limit for residential to 70%. But that, in our opinion, should be for the entirety of the Commerce Drive area design district, not just the transit oriented development park which became a, a, a new overlay. That was what the original name of the entire design district was before we changed it to the Commerce Drive District. So we think we had a, a, an editing error there. And when we made that overlay district, we didn't carry forward that 70% floor area maximum, which was intended, so we're proposing to add it back in. So basically, we're, we're proposing an editorial change in section 12.4.18 and in section 13.14.4, we're proposing to carry forward that same 70% maximum floor area limitation for residential use and mixed use developments. That's a long winded explanation for a very brief text amendment. Thank you. Did we have a motion? Have a, uh, a motion to uh, move to public hearing by Sorry. Commissioner Coleman, seconded by Commissioner Leslie. Uh, just for the rest of the commissioners, some of whom were not here when this happened. Uh, so once we get to public hearing, uh, staff will make a presentation. We'll have a chance. I'll make a more cogent presentation right. at that point. <laughs> uh, we'll have an opportunity to, uh, to talk about, uh, ask questions, and, and to discuss the item. Uh, during the public hearing, and then it will go to executive session, where we'll have an opportunity, further opportunity to uh, to uh, to discuss.
discuss the item before we ultimately vote on it. Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions on the, on the item we move public here? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The item carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda is uh, 50 Romanoff Road, a special permit application of Robert and Catherine Stezkowski for excavation and fill in an R3 zone. Uh, this is a proposal uh, to, it's basically a fill application um, that exceeds 250 yards, therefore requires a special permit. And it's an application for public hearing. Yep. Motion? Motion moved public hearing. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the item? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimously. Next item, moved to public hearing is 5151 Park Avenue, special exception and special permit application of Sacred Heart University pertaining to the construction of a new radio station and public safety building in an R3 zone. Uh, this is what it says. If you're familiar with the campus there, there's uh, right along Jefferson Street, there's a little ranch house that uh, contains WSHU radio station. They're looking to build a new building on the opposite end of campus on Park Avenue uh, to house the radio station and uh, also their um, public safety facility. So it'll be a new building at present. It's uh, adjacent to the entrance to Fairchild Wheeler Golf Course. If you're familiar there, there's a little Cape Cod structure there that's proposed to be replaced. But it is a special exception. New construction does require public care. Have a motion. Make a motion to move to public hearing. Motion made by Commissioner Calabrese and seconded by Commissioner Francis. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Carries unanimous. Next item on our agenda is Old Business, uh, 464 Pine Creek Avenue, special exception in coastal site plan application of Round Hill Associates pertaining to the construction of a single family dwelling. It's in the floodplain di district. Public hearing on 2-11-2014 expires 4-17-2014. Uh, Present at the hearing were Wagner, Alessi, Barretts, Calabrese, Jacobson, Coleman, Corcoran, and Francis. Mr. Chairman, just to give you a brief overview of what was uh, presented at the hearing. Uh, pursuant to our provisions of our section 23.6, which is our floodplain residential district, the applicant requests a special exception as per our section 27 and a coastal area management approval for a FEMA compliant elevated one family dwelling uh, with a three bay attached garage. The proposed house construction will be located on a portion of the property uh, that is landscaped with grass, shrubs, and trees. No dwelling currently exists on this property, however, a shed with a small deck and uh, boat dock uh, with a fixed pier, ramp, and floats are present and would remain. The lot was created by a resubdivision in 1992. The intended house site lies uh, in an elevation 12 flood zone. The lowest habitable floor of the proposed house is intended to be constructed at elevation 14 above the mean uh, sea level, while the proposed garage uh, slab is intended to be set at elevation 10 uh, feet, which meets the, or which is required, meets the FEMA requirements for elevation. The site is ac accessed, uh, has access both to municipal sewer and public water. Uh, section 23.6 would permit construction of a residence that would be consistent in size and location to homes permitted in our residence uh, R2 uh, zone and uh, consistent with this section 27. In part, one of that section, which basically reads, and we're all familiar with it, that the location, type, and character, and size of the home uh, shall be in harmony with and conform with appropriate and orderly development of the town in that neighborhood, and not hinder to discourage appropriate development and use of adjacent property or impair its values. That was discussed at the hearing as far as this being a residential area with residential homes. Now, there were two conditions that were recommended and discussed at the hearing uh, by our, our, our staff report. One is that it is strongly recommended that a series of test holes be excavated on the filled portion of the property for two reasons. One, to first determine the structural integrity of the property, and two, to determine the extent and composition of the uh, fill material. That was mentioned at the hearing. Uh, it was part of the uh, our um, Coastal Area Management Review, and the applicant at the hearing did agree uh, to that, would, would agree and did say they would agree to that condition. 
The second condition requested is that the site uh, visit reveal that there's a presence of two large piles of wood chips and log sections approximately uh, 40 to 50 cubic yards. Um, in addition, any material found that to be structurally unsound or hazardous uh, in ma any matter that the material should be removed from this tile wetland marsh as a condition of our approval uh, for the construction of this home. Uh, those were again were two conditions that were outlined in our staff report and described and discussed at the hearing and the applicant did uh, agree to both of those. That Mr. Chairman was pretty much was uh, submitted to both hearings. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody have a motion? Motion to? Make a motion to approve uh, with the two conditions listed by staff. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Alessi and seconded by Commissioner Jacobson. Uh, Mr. Lessie, your motion, you want to start? Um, no, I, I think they, they brought before us a beautiful house. Um, and we totally require rec um, elevation requirements by FEMA. I think it's a nice addition to the coastline. Uh, I do believe it harmonizes with the uh, community, and as long as those two conditions are met, I strongly support this application. Thank you. Mr. Jacobson. I agree. I think they did a really nice job um, protecting the environment. I think it's a strong application and I support it. Uh, I, I agree. Um, I do think that the, uh, the applicant here did uh, a very good job of um, putting forth uh, a complete application uh, going through even the um, the issues uh, that were addressed by staff in the, the coastal plan um, and part of this uh, will be to remediate uh, certain uh, portions of the, the tidal marsh on the property uh, there, there there is matter there that needs to be removed and if this isn't approved then the likelihood is that it won't be remediated so um, I also do agree that it is a, a very attractive uh, home and does harmonize with the neighborhood in terms of size and, and structure. Uh, so I would be supporting the application as well. Does anyone else have any more comments, questions? Okay. Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor of the motion to approve with conditions signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Next item on our agenda is 1073 North Benson Road, special exception application of Fairfield University for additions and alterations to an existing athletic building in conjunction with previously approved athletic field and stadium improvements. It's in a double A zone. Public hearing was on 2-11-2014, expires 4-17-2014. Present were Wagner, Alessi, Barretts, Calabrese, Jacobson, Coleman, Corcoran, and Francis. Again, Mr. Chairman, just a brief overview of what was presented at the hearing. This is, in fact, yes, a, an amendment or an addition to a, a, a improvement that was approved by this commission some time ago. The university makes this application to approve basically a 1,560 square foot addition to the Walsh Athletic Complex, the purpose of which is to provide a new location for their sports medicine uh, suite at the university. The existing sports medicine suite occupies the ground floor on the north side of the Walsh Athletic Complex. It includes uh, offices, hydrotherapy room, and a one-story training room. Wing with uh, its primary use to be uh, physical therapy. The wing extends approximately 47 feet to the north and face north face of the main building. The relocation of the field as previously approved by uh, this commission is in conflict with the existing training room wing. Uh, that, that's the, basically the purpose for the, the, uh, the application. The, the purpose is to maintain the current area uh, connection to the uh, Walsh Athletic Complex and rotate the uh, addition uh, counterclockwise as described to the commission and shown on their uh, site plan to the left to extend along the north elevation of the existing facility. The existing training room and vestibule occupy approximately 1,322 square feet. The proposed addition of 1,560 square feet will cover services that are currently impervious. Uh, the new additions, uh, the exterior will be a full glass and will allow for a better view. The training room, the addition of the door on the east elevation uh, will allow for better emergency transport of injured athletes. 
Hopefully there won't be many, but <laughs> that's, that's what it's there for. Replacement, also there was some discussion about the HVAC unit. Uh, we'll provide more energy efficient uh, heating and cooling for the current unit. Uh, and a slight increase in the square footage will allow for a better arrangement of the training and the rehab equipment as described at the hearing and outlined in their site plans uh, to the commission. That was chairman was what was presented at the public hearing. Thank you very much. Anybody have a motion? Motion to approve by Commissioner Coleman. Second, Second by Commissioner Francis. Uh, there were, this was an amendment to an existing plan, so there were no conditions uh, that were relevant to the... Uh, no, none that were uh, mentioned or, or necessary. Okay. Um, anybody have any comments, questions, discussions? Commissioner Corbin. I don't see any reason not to uh, approve this. I did note, however, that one thing I, I didn't hear about was any uh, or any neighbors of that. I don't know if it's visible from um, private residences. But we didn't have any evidence on that. Yeah. Well, we did have um, evidence uh, that you know all the neighbors were notified. Yes. Um, uh, and and so there was specific testimony by the applicant that uh, that, that was provided, um, and uh, I think that um, the room was empty <laughs> at the time of the presentation. Um, I mean, I, personally, it, it's a it's a rather modest. Uh, amendment to uh, you know the existing plan that was previously approved um, the existing the one that was previously approved they had <coughs> tremendous neighbors here and they had done a lot of outreach right. to them with the lighting and, <coughs> and the neighbors were pleased so. yeah this would not change anything that the neighbors in the initial hearing had heard as far as their concerns right. all the all the original approval is, is still in place. One of the things that was really interesting about this uh, application was the uh, the lighting on the field, and that uh, they worked, that the applicant worked extensively with the neighbors to develop a, a lighting structure that was directed towards the field, and also the times of operation and when they would reduce the power from uh, sixty to one hundred percent, eighty percent, some sixty percent, something like as the you know, progression, uh, so they would have uh, less of an, of an impact. Uh, so, yes, Mr. I, I think also attractive structure and will enhance the university in our town. So I do support it. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else? We're ready to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. The motion carries unanimously. Next item on our agenda is compliances. Uh, 1 Sasco Hill Road, 2291 Post Road. It's the application of ABC Sign Corp to amend the sign plan in the design commercial district. Okay, this is the uh, recently completed building on the corner of Post Road and Sasco Hill. The drawing that looks like the rendering is what the commission saw when the building was originally uh, approved for their sign plan. And in fact, there is a sign of Bankwell is the bank that's going to be in that uh, front right tenant location, and they already have an existing sign on the front in compliance with, with this plan. What they're proposing, since they're a corner tenant, they did not originally anticipate sides on the side. They're proposing one additional side facing Stasco Hill Road to match the sign that they have facing the post road. So that is the amendment to the plan, is to add a sign on the side wall, or the side facing it's identical to the sign they've already installed facing post okay. We can get a, a, a motion on the table and then we can discuss and ask questions of staff. So motion approved by Commissioner Francis, second by Commissioner Coleman. Any discussion, questions? Questions, Commissioner Alessi? Do we have any idea how high this is? From, from How high is it from the ground? The clearance underneath? Yeah, the clearance, sorry. Uh, I don't know, but I'm, I believe the building code requires a minimum clearance of seven feet. If it's less than that, I, will, I mean, if you want to require a minimum of seven foot clearance, we can do that. Yeah, I, mean, I, can. Just, yeah, I like to require it. Yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Just right. make that change to the, if you're going to make that change. You know, I believe it has it, but I mean, I mean, I can confirm yeah. it to the extent that it doesn't. We'll make it a condition of approval. Right. I mean, well, just by this picture, it doesn't look at this way. I'm asking, I don't know how high the overhang was. 
I mean, from the front picture, it does. You know. I think it's probably, I think it's probably a 10 foot, it's hard to see it's it's the truck here. But yeah, we can. Just uh, make it a condition of approval? Sure. Well, we'll we have to make that. Yeah. When, when, when we get there, we'll have to yeah. amend the motion to make the okay. condition um, the sign in all other respects to apply to our regulations. Yes. Is there any other questions or discussion on the item? Who made the motion? I believe Commissioner Francis made yep. the original motion. Mr. Fr Commissioner Francis, do you accept the amendment uh, to ensure that the yes. parents sign seven Yes. Mr. Cole? So the motion has been amended to include uh, a condition of approval that the clearance uh, be at least seven feet. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries unanimously. That completes our uh, executive session. Uh, and now we'll move to uh, the public hearing. We have uh, three items on the agenda. We'll take a moment to uh, reconfigure and then we'll get started. items on the agenda for public hearing tonight. Uh, the first is 41 Fairfield Beach Road and the uh, second uh, and third are 256 Spruce Street. Um, for the members of the public that are here, um, the applicant will give an initial presentation. Members of the public will be uh, entitled to be, be heard and then the applicant uh, will give a rebuttal and I'll close the hearings independently. The first is 41 Fairfield Beach Road, a special exception application of the Fairfield Beach Club, Inc. to rebuild an existing boathouse in an A zone. You ready to proceed? Yes. Thank good, you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, members of the staff. Uh, my name is James Miller. I reside at 406 Old Post Road in Fairfield. I am the first vice president of the Fairfield Beach Club. I have here this evening with me Dr. William McPadden, who is chairman of our building committee and Mr. George Little, who is the second vice president of the club. Um, we have applied under Section 27 for a special exception permit to rebuild an existing boat storage building on our property that uh, was damaged in the storm in October of 2012. Just a little bit of history. Uh, we're in our 128th year. Um, the renowned Fairfield resident philanthropist uh, who donated Jennings Beach and the marina property to the town, Annie B. Jennings, uh, brought six prominent Fairfield residents together in 1886 uh, and wanted to establish a place for socialization and recreation. And she asked them to form the Fairfield Beach Company and donated the land where our club has been in existence since 1886. Uh, at the extreme westerly end of our property we have a building that is approximately 54 feet by 24 feet and 12 and three quarters feet tall and we use it for a multiplicity of purposes uh, we store small watercraft in it that we use in our boating program we have uh, sunfish lasers kayaks optimists and some paddle boards um, and that takes up about 85% of the interior of the structure. It's just an open, it's just like a garage. It's just a big open building and we have racks in there with uh, watercraft in it. The other 15% of the building is divided into three rooms. One is the lifeguards first aid station. One is the uh, room for the pool filters and pumps and storage of pool chemicals. And the third room is a small uh, bathroom facility for, for members. Um, the building, is more than 60 years old. It's been damaged numerous times in storms. And following Superstorm Sandy, uh, we had our premises evaluated by our flood insurance carriers auditors, by FEMA, by the SBA, 
and by our own structural engineer. And the conclusion that they all came to and the recommendation that they all made was that the building be replaced. We were going to uh, do that in the spring last year, but when the FEMA regulations were accelerated to go into effect in January, we had so much else on our plate. We had over $2 million worth of damage to our premises. Uh, we made some temporary repairs to the boathouse and postponed um, replacing it until now. Uh, the boathouse currently sits at elevation 9.4 of sea level and we wanted to try to maintain it at that level um, because it's obviously difficult to take boats in and out of the structure if we had to comply with the V13 regulations that went into effect a little over a year ago. Uh, we met on site with members of the town planning and zoning staff and your coastal area management specialist and we discussed various alternatives and options to us. We then uh, had staff discuss this with the FEMA regional office in Boston and we all and the conclusion was reached that under section 35 of the zoning regulations uh, which incorporate by reference the FEMA rules and regulations that section allows for a variance to be obtained. We appeared on January 10th before the Fairfield Zoning Board of Appeals and requested a variance of only the requirement that we comply with the flood, the, the height of the floor uh, on our structure. And we, we were approved unanimously uh, by the Zoning Board of Appeals for that. So we have a variance and we've come before you today with that application, with the building having, uh, maintaining its current floor elevation. I, I will tell you that 85% of the floor is sand. Uh, it doesn't have a, a, a finished floor in it. Um, maintaining that at its existing uh, 9.4 feet. Um, we're very cognizant of our neighbors and we have, um, taken the time to obtain the variance uh, and to design a building that's a replacement essentially in duplicate of what we have. We're not looking to increase the footprint, the nature of the use, um, the height, the width of the length. We're replacing it with a building that is essentially the same. In a couple of moments I'll ask Dr. McPadden to show you the plans and give you a brief explanation of them. But um, from my perspective, what we have done is uh, designed a building with, uh, uh, we're going to put drive helical cones into the ground. They're actually screwed into the ground. We're not going to drive piles. Um, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that that structure is um, properly set back according to your regulations, but there's a large home just to the west of it. We don't want to cause them any disruption or disturbance. And once those helical piles are installed, the building will be built and constructed in accordance with FEMA regulations. Uh, the doors will be flow, will be break away and flow through. The side walls will be uh, break, will have vents in them. And uh, that's essentially what we're, we're doing. Uh, under your regulations, under section 27.4, uh, there are essentially five standards that control whether or not we should be allowed to do this. I, I, I think it's, almost redundant to go through them because all we're doing is replacing what's been there for 60 years. But uh, the first of those five requirements is that we are in conformance and harmony with the neighborhood uh, and with the development of the town and that putting this structure where it is and the way it's designed and uh, configured will not um, interfere with nor discourage further development in the town. Um, the second one is that we have adequate access for fire purposes and we do. We have a fire compliant driveway and we've checked with the fire department. The third is that we, the streets are adequate to service us and that our entrance in and out of the property at that location is safe and it's been that way for forever and uh, it's, it's never been a problem and it's a standard 20 foot wide driveway. Uh, next is that we have proper and adequate landscaping on our site and we do. The property is landscaped and that's renewed and replaced every year. And the last requirement is that we be in conformance with the master plan of development. 
Uh, we are a recreational membership club, which is a special exception under your zoning regulations, and we need to have this permit from you in order to replace a storm damaged building, uh, not unlike what all of our neighbors have done and what we've been doing for the last 16 months to recover from some more than $2 million worth of damage to our property. We would, um, if Mr. McPadden could, could uh, give you a brief uh, demonstration of what we're proposing, we'll be finished. We don't want to prolong the time. Um, this is a rendering of the uh, existing elevations of the building. Um, and what we propose oh, to do... Could you, could you please introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is William McPadden. Uh, I'm the head of the building committee for, for this project, the Beach Club. Um, so, uh, on behalf of the Beach Club? Yes. Yeah, as opposed to a, a private consultant? No, I'm just a member. A member. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, but this, these are the elevations as it exists now. Um, these are the proposed alterations to the, uh, to the existing elevations, which would be to put a dormer, a dormer on the um, eastern side of the building. Um, that's to accommodate the elevation of uh, the pool pumps uh, and, and still to give us headroom in that area of the building. Um, the roof line of the dormer won't, would not exceed the existing roof line of the uh, of the building. Uh, so the gray the gray area. The gray area the, here. The new would, that's that's a change from the existing. Yes. Okay. And what what about the light post? Is that uh, is it, I see on the on the end of the. Uh, that's the, the ut that's the um, for the utilities entering the building. An electrical line comes in there. That would be that's an existing structure. At the peak. At the peak. And and the the light that is spotlight, spotlight that's uh, shown on on the plan is that is there an existing spotlight at that on that uh, post? Yes, yes, uh, there is. It's motion sensitive, so it's only on if there's someone after 11 p.m. at night in that. We ha we have it there for security, right? But it's it, it's only it's a motion motion activated light, excellent. And, and there's also a motion activated camera on the side of the building as well for this both for security reasons. Is, is the light um, downward uh, directed? Yes. Dark sky. Yes. It's downward directed and it's directed away from the street. Thank you. Okay. Um. These are the existing uh, floor, plan, uh, floor plan of the building, the, uh, the existing uh, roof, roof framing of the building, and um, the foundation, the existing foundation. And these are the proposed, the proposed uh, same uh, elevation are the, of the roof line, the foundation, and uh, um, and it shows that we don't intend to change it. Yes, Commissioner Corcoran? Where is the dormer you mentioned earlier? The, the dormer on the roof line is right here. On the, on the roof framing. Well, the dormer you showed before extended all the way to the outside wall. Mm, no, I think it's... Uh, it's... section right here in the middle of the building. Did you see it extends all the way to the outside wall? Whereas this, this thing you pointed here doesn't? Well, it, uh, I believe it only extends to this. It extends to here, this wall. It's straight up now. Oh, to the outside. And what you're showing there is recessed back, unless I'm looking at the wrong thing. Oh, uh, I see. You, I, I just, you were actually pointing to this, not this. That, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Just for clarification on the dormer, which is the only change to the exterior appearance of the building that we have um, in our discussions with the town, uh, and as a, by our request, condition of approval of our variance to leave the floor at 9.4 feet, we agreed to build a platform within the pool equipment room, and all the pool equipment will be above 
elevation 13. We needed five and a half feet of headroom above it to be able to service it, and that's why we needed to have the dormer. Thank if there you. are any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'd like to speak, and if there's any members of the public present. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Very good. Thank you. Attorney Thank Martin. you. Is there any member of the public that wishes to be heard on this application? Yes, please. Come up to the podium uh, and state your name. There's no time limit, so long as you keep your comments germane. My name is Mary Titro, and I live at 86 Fairfield Beach Road, across from the Beach Club. And I just want to come tonight and um, note uh, that we have no issues uh, with this plan of the Beach Club. We are uh, pleased that they're maintaining the footprint and the elevation as uh, currently uh, found today. And so we just have sometimes had um, a difference of opinion, but tonight we're glad to be able to support Thank this. Thank you. Now you mentioned we. Are you representing I'm, anyone? I'm my uh, neighbors, the John and Pat Kermeyer as well, who are um, away uh, at, and not able to attend this meeting tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to be heard? Okay. Keep going once. Attorney Miller, if you'd like to rebut, if not, we'll <laughs> I, I would like to thank Mrs. Tetro and, and our neighbors for being so responsive uh, when we reach out to them and have discussions about things that we're doing on our premises. We're very, uh, we try to be good neighbors and they are good neighbors to us. So uh, other than that, I would just urge you to let us replace this 60-year-old teetering building with a new one. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. I'll close the, I'll close the hearing on 41 Fairfield Beach Road. Uh, we have two remaining items, 256 Spruce, both pertain to 256 Spruce Street. Um, can I have a motion to consolidate these uh, procedurally? Let's make a motion to hear Ms. one. A motion made by Commissioner Lessie, seconded by uh, Commissioner Corcoran. Um, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of well, that motion carried. Any any abstent, uh, any objections? No abstentions. No. Very good. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, so the next items uh, consolidated on our agenda is 256 Spruce Street. It's a zone change application of David Quatrella, trustee, to establish a design commercial district on land presently zoned residence B. And the third item, 256 Bruce Street, zoning compliance application of David Quatrella, trustee for expanded off-street parking. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is David Quatrella. I'm a lawyer with Quatrella and Rizzio. Our offices are at One Post Road in Fairfield. Um, I'm acting as trustee this evening for two of my clients. Uh, which are two limited liability companies, 3355 Post Road LLC and 3377 Post Road LLC. Uh, the owners of the two small shopping centers on the Post Road, uh, which abut the uh, rear yard of the subject premises on Spruce Street. Um, I'd like to point out this evening that two of my clients are here, uh, Michael Schnella and Donald Sherman, who are two of the principals in uh, both of these LLCs. Um, Mr. Sherman and Mr. Chanel are also both residents of Fairfield. Uh, and lastly, with me this evening is Michael Baturla, our engineer with the Huntington Company. In a few moments, I'll introduce Michael to describe the project and what the intended improvements are for the site. I, I have a quick question. Um, can you explain to you, uh, why you're here as trustee and not just simply bringing the application? Yes, because the, um, first of all, the, uh, the property existing shopping center is uh, already zoned uh, designed commercial. Um, the property that we're acquiring, uh, which we have actually acquired since the time we filed the application, uh, I've gone from being the contract purchaser of the property to actually owning title to it. Uh, the intention is to split the property, uh, do a lot line revision, and uh, convey half of the property to 3355 Post Road LLC, which is the um, portion of the shopping center where the uh, subway and the Dunkin' Donuts is located. And the uh, other 50% of the property uh, would be uh, uh, merged into the property uh, at 3377 Post Road, uh, which is the building where uh, the Tabuli Grill is, uh, Toscano Pizzeria, uh, Blow Dry uh, Hair 
uh, Salon and Vision Center Associates. And the reason for doing that is um, to allow for the parking to be allocated between the two properties. Uh, the, the way these centers are set up, the tenants each pay a portion of the uh, real estate taxes. And rather than uh, greatly increase either one of the two shopping centers and requiring the tenants to pay a, you know, a, a greater tax bill, um, the property owners felt it would be most fair to divide it evenly since they share the parking there. So the tenants in one center are, in one of the buildings, the, the subway and the uh, Dunkin' Donuts, they pay their own taxes for their property, whereas the four tenants in the other building pay the taxes on that property, but they share the parking. It's a common uh, parking arrangement. Um, because actually 3377 uh, Post Road um, is a, a prior non-conforming building. It had no parking at one time. Um, and then about 10 years ago, uh, the property owners, the same owners that are now, the present owners, um, they uh, came to this, this commission and got a zone change for property at 280 Spruce Street. I don't know if anybody was on the board and the commission at that time. But it was virtually the same application that you have before you this evening. They acquired 280 Spruce Street. They changed the zone from residence B to uh, design commercial. And they uh, made parking out of it to provide parking for that building. We're doing the same thing this evening. Uh, this property became available uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, the woman that had been living in there many years, uh, uh, Margaret Adams, died. Uh, the family tried to sell the home for a long time over a year and uh, they weren't able to sell it and uh, finally they reached agreement with my clients to acquire it. Uh, so there was a, uh, a single family residence uh, that you know, was in a very poor state of repair uh, which has been since demolished and I do have photographs of what the home looked like which I'll submit into the record in a moment. So to answer your question, we're because we're going to divide the property in two, um, and, and merge it into the two separate uh, parcels on the post road. Uh, in the interim, it was felt best to put the property in my name as trustee. Thank you. Okay. And I might as well submit the copies of the photographs of the home that was on there, just so we have a reference point on what was there. And then, you know, Mike Paterla will describe for you what's going to, what's going to be constructed. So if I may, Mr. Chairman. So the, this shopping center is in the Southport section of town. As I stated, um, it's on Spruce Street. It's on the northerly side of Spruce Street. On our zone change map, uh, it's the center of the 500-foot radius map. It's the shaded uh, property. It's approximately uh, 0.16 acres in size, which is slightly more than 7,000 square feet. Um, this is in the uh, residence district B. It abuts the, uh, des the design commercial district on both its westerly and its northerly boundaries. We're requesting a zone change, which would, in effect, extend the uh, design commercial district onto this uh, property um, to incorporate it into that existing zoning district. The, um, again, for uh, reference purposes and maybe to give a better visual for the uh, commissioners, I've um, highlighted a section, highlighted the same map, a reduced copy of it in yellow to show all the properties within the 500 foot radius that fall into the uh, design commercial district. Um, the, uh, my point in showing this to you is to uh, to highlight the fact that most of the property within um, the 500 foot radius is in fact already in the design commercial district. On Spruce Street, uh, the properties are either in uh, residence district B or design commercial. Um, measuring out the frontage on the properties on the street at the present time, uh, there is actually more property, you know, on a lineal foot basis, there's more properties fronting on design commercial than there are in the residence uh, B zone. Um, presently, there's five residences on the southerly side of uh, Spruce Street. Um, these are uh, colonial homes. Uh, one is owner-occupied and four are rental properties. Um, one of the owners was here this evening. He came in earlier. Um, his name is uh, Doug Romero. 
Um, he asked what it was that we were doing. We explained it to him. Um, he authorized me to represent to you that he is satisfied with the project with the condition that there be no access uh, to, the, uh, to Spruce Street, either ingress or egress, from the proposed parking lot. Unfortunately, he couldn't stay around uh, long enough to wait for the public hearing, but he did uh, indicate that I was authorized to represent that he and his wife, Alicia uh, and Doug Romero, um, were in support of the application. Uh, their address, I have it over here. Uh, they reside at 279 Spruce Street, which is uh, almost directly across from the subject premises that we're seeking to have the zone change. Um, his condition, though, as I said, was that there be no ingress or egress uh, to and from the property or the shopping center from Spruce Street, which is one of the conditions that the applicant is willing to uh, self-impose on the approval, should you see fit to grant it. Um, the Previous application in 2004, when they incorporated 280 Spruce Street into the shopping center, that same condition was uh, imposed by this commission that there be no ingress or egress. So at that time, the uh, applicant uh, constructed the white uh, six-foot high fence. It's a vinyl clad uh, fence, uh, uh, very attractive. I don't know if any the commissioners had a chance to view it. Uh, the intention would be to extend that same fencing um, along the front of, uh, of the subject premises uh, to also uh, have the consistency in the appearance of the uh, uh, rear side of the shopping center to, and to surround the new parcel in the same fashion. So, so um, along Spruce Street, there would be a, a white fence so to avoid cars turning into the parking lot from Spruce Street and the cars would travel from Post Road, enter the commercial property, and then go behind the buildings to park in the lot. That's correct. The only the means of ingress and egress would be from the Post Road. And so and there, it, yeah, there sorry. would be also, you're proposing a, a white fence then along the property line with the adjacent residential neighbor on uh, well, the 20, 24... 243-175? Yeah, that property is vacant land. It's owned by People's United Bank. Uh, People's United Bank has been trying to sell it for two or three years unsuccessfully. Yeah. But that's vacant property. Right. But, uh, okay. Right. So, yes. So at this point, there's no, pro you're not proposing to, to erect a fence along that property. No, we are. Living there now. No, we are planning on erecting okay. a fence. Yeah. Right. We would, I mean, even though it's owned yeah. by a bank, it's, it's, uh, Right. We, we, we envision at some point the bank will be successful in selling it and perhaps someone building a home there. So we're going to put the fence up now. Um, the, there, it, I just, again, I want to stress it's the same fence that we already have along Spruce Street, um, presently um, enclosing the uh, parking area that the, the, my clients already owned and constructed, which your commission approved about 10 years ago. We're also going to... Uh, leave uh, six-foot-high hedges, which um, were along the front of the property uh, from the prior owner. Um, we're going to fill in those hedges where the existing sidewalk, it was a sidewalk that entered from the, uh, from the street to the front door of the house. We're going we're to uh, plant hedges there, and also where the driveway was located, we're going to plant hedges. Um, Laura Pooley, the town engineer, um, had recommended that we uh, you know, re restore the, a curb so there'd be no curb cut on uh, the street line. That was our intention anyway, and we certainly have no problem with that recommendation of your town engineer. So is there, uh, and this is almost rhetorical, uh, is there a problem with parking at the existing commercial building? Y yes. The, that's. Well, I wanted to bring that uh, to your attention. The reason why the uh, property owner is buying this parking lot is to satisfy the needs of the tenants in the shopping center as well as an, a, in an effort to uh, stop the employees of the center from parking on the street. Uh, because the parking is tight in the shopping center and more parking is needed, uh, the owners, uh, the operators and tenants of 3377 uh, Post Road, which is the property at the corner of Post Road and, uh, and Spruce Street, 
uh, some of them have been having their employees park on Spruce Street. And um, although none of the neighbors have complained, uh, Mr. Romero tonight was very happy to hear that the intention is by creating the additional 18 parking spaces uh, off street that the landlord is going to instruct the tenants to have the employees parking in the lot. Um, so the intention is to provide more parking both for employees as well as for patrons of the shopping center. And, and so um, in terms of calculations um, with regard to the existing square footage of commercial space uh, as uh, against the number of spaces that are existing and proposed, how does that line up with our regulations? Yeah, we, we have 52 parking spaces be presently between 3355 and 3377 Post Road. The uh, uh, Subway slash Dunkin Donut building, those are the two tenants that occupy that building. Um, that building is conforming as to the number of parking spaces under your regulations, which is, I believe is five per thousand for retail. The building at 3377 Post Road is not conforming as to off-street parking located on the title to that property. The, the center operates and functions because we're allowed to, to share parking between the two abutting properties. And that's how we, overall we're in conformity, but that's because 3355 Post Road allows 3377 to share parking. So is there existing parking that could be used at um, the Dunkin' Donuts uh, lot for it, it's, it's being used, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's being used, yeah. It, it, it's the peak hours of operation where we, we have the greatest need for the off-street parking. And we're, we're trying to keep the cars off of Spruce Street. Um, we, we've been told, you know, anecdotally that some people park and, you know, walk elsewhere that aren't even patronizing the shopping center. Some people are parking there all day uh, on Spruce Street. Um, and walking where? Uh, good question. Uh, Mr. Romero thought that at least one car was walking to the train. Um, which seems like a long walk to me, but, uh, well, I mean, can't, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, can't the, again, a rhetorical question, can't the property owner, um, you know, police, uh, unauthorized, uh, parking on their property if, if there's a car that's sitting there all day, every day? No, no, the, the, I'm talking about the street. We're, we're unaware of any unauthorized cars parking in our lot, but we do have a need for additional off-street parking. Um, the center is fully occupied. It's a very successful center. There's no vacancy um, in the center. Both buildings are fully occupied. And uh, we're trying to improve the parking situation um, off street by providing more off street parking. It was, it was very helpful when we incorporated 280 Spruce Street 10 years ago. Um, now that the opportunity presented itself to acquire this property, um, the owner thought it best to do that. It satisfies the complaints of some of the tenants. Um, it'll assist to get the cars off of the street. Uh, Mr. Romero had said they were having some difficulty getting their cars in and out of their driveway uh, because of the snow. There was really no place for the town to plow the snow. So between the snow that's piled on the side of the road and these cars parking in the road, it's narrowed Spruce Street down to the point where the Romeros at least were having trouble uh, you know, getting their cars in and out of their own driveway. With the additional part, and this is the last question, then you can continue on with your, where you want to go. Um, with the, if, if this was to be granted and you merge the property the way that you suggest, with the additional parking spaces, would that present an opportunity for the uh, owner of the properties to expand the commercial uh, buildings and square footage? No. There, there's no intention, nor, as I understand it, would be would it be possible without uh, getting variances. So this is purely the intention here is purely to increase the off-street parking, on-site parking, um, basically the identical application that they came in with 10 years ago when they added the parking on Spruce Street behind uh, uh, 3377 Post Road at the corner. All right, so what I was starting to say is that the, there are already other properties located on um, 
Spruce Street that, are, that fall in the design commercial district, the most notable being the office building that's, um, that is along Jellop Street. It's at the uh, uh, southwest corner of Jellop and Spruce. It's at the northwest corner of Jellop and Center Street. Uh, that's in the design commercial district. The, uh, aside from the house uh, that we purchased, it's now in my name as trustee in the photographs I showed you, uh, that was really the only uh, residential uh, building in, uh, that was being used for residential purposes on the north side of uh, Spruce Street. Um, as I said, the property immediately to the east of uh, the subject premises is a vacant lot owned by People's United Bank, which they've been trying to sell for a number of years. <clears throat> immediately to the uh, east of the People's United Bank property is a residential structure that's been used for the past 50 years um, for commercial purposes. And it's presently owned and occupied by an accounting firm known as Paulsa and Paulsa. Um, they're occupying it as a uh, commercial office building uh, by virtue of a variance that was granted, I understand, in 1961. So there's a long-standing history of that property uh, being used for commercial purposes uh, by virtue of that uh, variance. Uh, Paulsa and Paulsa was, is also one of the uh, neighbors that was nice enough to uh, give us a letter of support. Uh, stating that they had reviewed the plans and were in uh, supporting of the granting of the change of zone. Um, <clears throat> to the east of the uh, uh, Paulsa and Paulsa building um, is property also owned by People's United Bank, which is at the rear of the uh, bank branch which faces on uh, the post road. All the property um, on the post road that backs up to the rear yards of the properties on the northerly side of Spruce Street are all in the designed uh, uh, commercial district and are being used for commercial purposes. At this time, I was going to ask um, Mr. Baterla to explain in greater detail the proposal for the improvements to the uh, site. Yeah, I think we have a couple questions before you get for you that. Commissioner Jacobs, uh, do we have a record? Is, is that letter from the Paulsons in the record? Yes, the original letters were were, both, were submitted. There's two letters in support. Paulson Paulses is in the file, and I have copies. If uh, if Jim doesn't have it there, I believe it was submitted a few days ago, Jim. I have I have copies. Uh, I mean, I saw two two emails that they were both against. This is very easy. I have the copies. Right. So. Okay. How many square feet is this building we're talking about for this parking lot? The building, the, the parking lot that uh, we're going to construct? Yeah. I mean, no. We're trying to there's, there's there's two, satisfy. Two commercial buildings. There's two commercial buildings, yes. How many square feet of commercial yep. space in each? I have that. <coughs> Uh, 3355 Post Road consists of 3,440 square feet of space. And 3377 Post Road consists of 4,487 square feet of space. So how many, uh, under our regulations, how many parking spaces would you need? I'm trying to just do quick. Yeah, I have that too. <laughs> Okay, for the um, 3355, we need uh, 18 spaces. And 3377, we would need 23 spaces. By my calculations, you're using five per thousand, Jim, is that correct? Five per thousand. For the subway, there'll be no property space on area. It could be great. I don't, have, I don't have the breakdown for that. Yeah. Yeah. That building is conforming. When when we went in with Subway and Dunkin' Donuts, I know that no variances were required at that time. I don't think there's a surplus. And and after the proposed construction, how many total parking spaces? We'll be going from 52 existing to 70 uh, available. It's a, a, the proposal would fit 18 conforming parking spaces on the subject premises. Seven, so we're talking 10,000. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then uh, Mr. Chanel is uh, mentioning that there is also two restaurants in 3377. Yeah, Tabuli. Uh, right, Tabuli and the uh, Tos Toscano Pizzeria. So, I mean, there needs to be more, a more detailed calculation uh, yeah. in terms of the commercial space, retail versus food service and, and such, in order to get it to the specific numbers. Right. But, um, yeah. The important point is that it, we're going to provide more spaces, not less, and that can only be of benefit to the patrons of the center and we believe to the neighbors in avoiding the uh, on-street on parking that's been going on now. Where are you getting 52 spaces when 18 and 23 and 41? 18 and... Didn't you say you have 18 There's, there's, 50, I, there's 52 total spaces right now. Didn't you say 3355 has 18? No, no, that's how many they need by my calculations, but apparently I'm wrong because I'm not taking into consideration the patron area calculations for the restaurants. Um, and Go ahead, just I use your microphone. I wonder uh, how many employees are there at peak hours in these two buildings? I, I don't know the answer to that. Perhaps uh, one of my clients, do either one of you know the answer? You can come up and... You might have to figure that out. Thanks. I, I don't see where there are 70 spaces in the. No, well, they're not. They're not marked on the on the plans that we've submitted. Uh, if you face the uh, subway and the uh, Dunkin' Donuts from the road, there's a, a large parking area to the left of the building, uh, and they're not. Those those spaces were not. Uh, uh, marked on the plans that were submitted since the subject premises is not presently a part of that shopping center. Um, I, I don't know if Mr. Baterla has some old surveys that might have the parking count, but we physically counted the spaces. That's where I, I came up with the number of 52 for you. I understand your point, but at the same time, the, the plans that are in front right. of us show you, that, yeah, thank you. Show you um, utilizing both those parcels in your in your 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 parking plan, uh, and so we've only got part of the picture. Yeah, um, one lot. Mike Petrola just came up and pulled out of his file the uh, the site plan that was done when the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, came in for their approvals, and he's just told me that he it shows 50, a total of 53 spaces on the site right now, as opposed to the 52 that we counted. That might be because of the snow. Um, we had a little difficulty uh, on one side of the parking lot visually counting. We thought it was 52. Apparently, on the site plan, we have 53, and I could submit this into the record, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like. Uh, sure. Do you, do you mind? Uh, no, okay. Go ahead. No, that, this, is, this, this is just a, a, a plan from when the Dunkin' Donuts went in as to what was approved for that lot at that time, right? And that's what ended up being striped in order to get the certificate of occupancy for right. them. So th that should be accurate as to what is actually in the field uh, today. So, and I, I think that the, um, the the issue with the exist with the, with the proposed plan that's in front of us now, just while you have. Uh, indicated spaces on the lots that are adjacent that show the full parking lot there you're missing one side of it that's correct but that missing piece is on this uh, Dunkin Donut plan it shows the, the spaces that were actually striped on the uh, easterly side of the Dunkin Donut uh, uh, subway building One of your plans show the striping on the new lots. Oh yes, it's um, Mike. Why don't you come up and I think this is the appropriate time to describe the plans. Yes, we've 
we're providing not only the, um, the zone change map showing the 500 foot radius, but we're showing exist existing conditions as well as proposed conditions. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Michael Baterla. I'm a licensed uh, professional engineer and licensed um, land surveyor here in Connecticut, member of the Huntington Company with an office in Fairfield. As, a, as a was told, um, this particular lot on Spruce Street had a single family house and a driveway that came out to Spruce Street. That's, I think, the first map in, in your set. It's, uh, it's just over 7,000 square feet, 7,038 square feet. Um, my second map shows the piece constructed as, as a proposed parking lot. Parking lot will be paved. Uh, we'll add 18 parking spaces. Um, we'll propose a catch basin in the southwest corner and a, uh, a series of 4x4 four four concrete um, galleys. The galleys will uh, provide uh, to disperse the stormwater runoff that comes off the proposed parking lot. I did calculations and investigated storms from a two-year storm all the way up to a hundred-year storm and it's my testimony to you that these galleys will, will will contain the uh, all the storms. Uh, Laura Pooley at the engineering department reviewed my computations, and I think in one of her emails uh, agreed. As uh, Attorney Coachella also said, there'll be no access onto Spruce Street. I put a note on the plan. Not only do I show no access onto Spruce Street, I added a note that it says exactly, no access proposed to Spruce Street. Um, the access will be from the post road through the existing parking lot. The plan that was handed uh, to the commission tonight shows a plan that we did for the proposed Dunkin' Donuts. I was out there this morning and made the count on the proposed, on the Dunkin' Donuts lot itself. And there ex uh, exists 22 spaces on the Dunkin' Donuts on the east side. There's 22 spots here. There's 19 between the two buildings. And, and the piece that was, uh, uh, had the zone change years ago contains 12. So there's an existing total count of 53 spaces that exist right now that are striped. We plan to add 18 more. We'll bring our total up to 71 spaces. Uh, one of Laura, a couple more Laura Pulik's con uh, comments from the engineering department. We we plan to, as she said in her comments, discontinue the driveway. Every, uh, the whole shoulder will be regraded. Concrete curb will be uh, placed in the existing opening. There, right now, there's an existing tree, approximately 12 to 15 inches in diameter, to the east of that driveway and also to the west of that driveway. As, uh, she also mentioned in her comments, and it's just norm for, for most any project, the tree warden uh, gets to go out there and inspect and, and, and gives his report to, to her. And it's uh, our intention, anything that he'd like planted there uh, would, would be more than happy to do. We've, as uh, Attorney Coachella also said, there's a fence plan to go across Spruce Street and also on the east side of this particular piece, there's an old picket fence that now exists between the two properties. Uh, one question, uh, one question also that uh, Laura Pooley brought out was um, the proposed width between the two parking aisles we had proposed at 31 feet. The, uh, the minimum width, according to the town's regulation, is 24. We, we wanted a, a, a bigger width to get more maneuverability uh, within the parking lot itself. Uh, one of the members of 
uh, 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 on our behalf uh, went in to see her and I think there was a second email sent to her. Uh, we would like to go at least a foot bigger than the minimum, bringing it from 24 to 25 feet so we can get a, 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 another foot larger uh, space width, aisle width in the adjacent lot. What that would do would uh, bring our um, grass island between the two properties. It it, it bring it, uh, it, it it would have a, a, a wider space there for planting. So are you suggesting a difference between what is currently envisioned and the uh, the plan that's in front of us? Well, it, we have we would like to go 31 feet, and uh, she said that she'd accept 25 feet. I can. Excuse me one second. Yeah, Laura's original email uh, suggestion, at, once we received that, uh, one of the principals, uh, Michael Schinella, went and met with her, and they reached agreement on a compromise, and I believe she issued a second email, which was sent to uh, Jim, uh, which actually I think I received from Jim. Why, why would she advocate for a more narrow... Uh, 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 she wanted a larger landscaping buffer between the uh, People's United Bank parcel and um, our parcel. The, the minimum width on an aisle between parking spaces is 24. We have it bigger than the minimum width. And I can show you what it would look like if we, if we did the minimum width. Did, did she explain to you why she was interested in a larger buffer between the properties? I, I, I take it from the from reading her email, she just wanted to get some more green space rather than have blacktop. Typical parking lot with a 24 foot aisle, uh, 9 by 18 sp spaces on each side, there's a pavement width of 60 feet. Our proposal was to get a bigger aisle width so we'd have more than the minimum 60 feet. So if we had more, we would have less of a green planting strip. So, so this is now what you're circulating here is a revised proposal? That, that, shows, that shows the width as 24 feet, which is the minimum. We would like to at least bring it to 25 feet, which would look very similar to what, what's on that 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. No, I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. being confrontational, but what you're suggesting you want is not identified in, in any plan that's in front of us. The 8.5 by 11 plan. 8.5 by 11 plan. Shows 24 feet. 24 foot. And you're saying you... you, you we would like 25, but at that scale, 24 and 25 you probably would, wouldn't see it pictorially in front of you. Mr. Chair? Yes. Did you say earlier that you would move, that you're going to combine these two lots for yes. parking? If we, and you're going to move we, the lot yeah. to take it from one onto the new lot? If we, the last sheet on the plan shows, shows the split, shows the subdivision on how the properties would be split. Where did, did I hear you say earlier, though, that you're going to take um, parking spaces that exist on the neighboring lot and pull them over into this lot. You said that's why you didn't want to use 31 feet. Uh, no, it's if the park, the parking lot, the, the, the property, this this Spruce Spruce Street property will be split. We'll split down down the middle, although the areas would be different. So let me just. We know that. This might, I have a visual that's highlighted. It might be a little easier to, uh, to, to see than what's on the board there. If I could just submit this into the record. The yellow is, is encircling what would become 3377, and this, the portion of the property encircled in blue is what would become part of 3355, and I think that's probably an easier way to... That's not really what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, what I thought I heard you say earlier was that you wanted to not use 31 feet because you wanted to pull the spaces from the adjoining lot into this one. I thought that's what I heard you say. No, we wanted to use 31 feet so we could have more maneuverability within the parking lot itself. 
24 feet is the minimum standard. We chose to go bigger. Laura Pooley, at first, she suggested go back to 24, then in her second email, the way I read it, agreed 25 feet would be, would be acceptable. What that would do would make this green strip along our easterly neighbor bigger. There'd be more green. Okay. Instead of blacked up, there'd be more green. And that's pointed out on that 8.5 by 11 right. piece of paper. So on the western side, do you yeah. plan to maintain the fence that's there? Um, you said you were no, no. You're not leaving the fence up between the parking lots. No. no. This, this existing fence would be removed. They would then, this fence would then go over here. There's, there's fencing right now, if you follow my finger. That, all that fencing is going to come out. And then they're going to put it along the perimeter of this, the subject premises, once the subject premises is merged into the existing shopping center. Will there be any barrier between the, the, the spaces that uh, face each other on the old parking lot and the new parking lot? There'll be a, uh, uh, there'll, there'll be a, a um, five foot strip of grass. Oh, there'll be a five foot strip. Okay, and that'll be, um, where is that related to the present property line? Is it? Um, Just about down the middle. Down the middle, okay. And, and was Ms. Pooley's concern about having more green space a, an aesthetic thing? Or I, was she worried about ratio of uh, hard state to permeable? No, the, the, the calculations with the plans the way that um, Mr. Paterla drew them, um, it, it, there's, it, there's not any problem with this. It, it meets the regulations. With, without, yeah, at 31 yeah. feet? Yeah, I, we think it was just an aesthetic uh, issue on her part to create more green area on the site. Reduce the amount of blacktop, as Mr. Petrola said. Uh, Mr. Petrola, the way I see this, and um, what we're, we're still forgetting is what we're requesting a zone change. In my opinion, and, and what's been the case with this commission here, in the past is we've been kind of against what I would call a spot zone here. We still have a lot of residential houses or six or seven as it is on this street now. And um, honestly, I go to this shopping center a lot, stuff in those a lot. I've never been had to park on the street due to um, not enough parking spots. And basically now you're asking for practically double the town requirement for parking spots. And honestly, I don't know what the need is, especially changing, taking another residential lot um, off of Spruce Street uh, for commercial development. I, I, I just don't understand what the need is right now based on, on that. And we we're still trying to have to get a zone change here. And we still have residential homes right across the street from this, 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 this lot. Yeah, there's, there's five residential homes on the street right now. Right. Yeah. The, they're all on the, uh, the southerly side of right. Spruce Street. I, I think the problem with the northerly side... Actually, I think there's one next door to you, too, isn't there? The it's it's a, a vacant lot. And what is, what's it zoned? It's, it's zoned residence B. Okay, so yes. we still have a residential next door. No, no, you, you, have to, you have to consider the lot zoned residence B to be residential lots. So Even though it's a vacant lot, it's still today, zone, today, yeah. it's zone residential. I, I, there's no question it's zone residential. So is it fair that we take that lot now and sandwich that residential lot between two commercial lots? Well, I, I think this comes down to um, whether those lots would ever be developed residentially. Certainly they're zoned for that and they could possibly be. What I, what I would like to bring to the board's, the commission's attention is that People's United Bank has been trying to sell that lot for nearly three years unsuccessfully. The family that we bought our lot from, which was the uh, state of uh, Margaret Adams, they were trying to market it for more than one year. Mm -hmm. And um, this, again, is anecdotal from what the family told us when we were talking to them. They, they felt that the reason why they couldn't sell their house and their lot, and they thought why People's Bank was having difficulty selling their lot, is the fact that these properties on the northerly side of Spruce Street back up to commercial properties. Well, they're already the, fully developed. The yeah. Uh, yeah. Real estate recession right now too. I mean, that's not for us to decide. The TPZ is not here. This yeah. The I, not here to decide why they sold the lots. Not. Our yeah. looking at the map is we want to sandwich 
a residential lot now by changing another residential lot to a commercial zone for a parking lot. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I believe, I believe, and this is, you know, I was getting to this point. I believe that this does, you know, uh, is consistent with your uh, plan of uh, uh, plan of conservation and development. Um, in that, one of the uh, goals, as I understand it, under the uh, uh, POCD in Fairfield, is to increase, you know, to get cars off the street and to have as much on-site parking as, as possible. I've never seen evidence of it and we're looking for double the amount of parking spots that regulations call for, number I, one. I, and it's really not the town's best interest to spot zone and take away residential properties. Well, I, I don't think this is spot zoning because we, uh, this, the subject premises abut on two sides, the uh, design commercial district. Spot zoning, um, in, in my opinion, would be if this was an island that we were creating in the middle of a residential zone, where we were looking to have a design commercial district. Um, in, in this instance, I think it's just an extension and a relatively small extension because the parcel is only 7,000 square feet in size, which is uh, 16 one hundredths of an acre. Uh, 0 0.16 acres, I believe, is what it was measured out at. So, you know, the applicant believes that the extension of the zoning district um, to, you know, to incorporate the additional a 0.16 acres really wouldn't constitute spot zoning and it would have a double beneficial effect. One is to make what is now a, a prior non-conforming property at 3377 uh, Post Road, um, which is non-conforming as to the uh, required on-site parking, it would make it less non-conforming. That's one benefit. And the second benefit is to um, fulfill one of the goals of the uh, POCD, I thought, in Southport, which is to uh, provide more off-street parking. Um, so we, we think it's consistent with what uh, this commission acting in its legislative capacity under uh, uh, Section 8-3 of the Connecticut General Statutes would require. Um, there's a basis, that we think, and uh, I'm not certain, uh, uh, Commissioner Alessi, what hours of the day you may be going to the uh, the center. Um, the tenants have been complaining to uh, the landlord, to uh, you know, the, what is truly the applicant who I'm being trustee for. Mm -hmm. The complaints are that you know, there's not enough parking, particularly in that building at the corner at 3377 Post Road. Um, I think that's one of the great biggest offenders are the tenants in that building that are having their employees parking out on Spruce Street. Um, you know, I've, I've heard in particular it's the, uh, the blow dry uh, tenant that's in there because I guess they have a lot of uh, customers or clientele and they're coming in and out frequently and uh, uh, the, the, so the, the, the owner of the business is having his, their employees park out on the road to allow for more parking on site I, I for that understand, building. I understand yeah. the whole yeah. fact that your, your, your landlord really wants a parking lot to help his tenants. I can understand that. But we have an issue here that we want to take a residential lot and zone commercial on a street that still is mostly residential. Well, and the blow dry, if I could just add to this, the, 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 the issue with blow dry is that it's on the corner and that the parking that's available is all the way on the other side of the commercial building. And I go to this parking lot, I drive past this lot four times a day at all different times and on the weekends and everything. And I don't personally perceive any need for additional parking on in, in, in these parking lots. And I think yeah. that even, I, well, I don't, I don't know, but I don't understand how creating these parking spaces all the way over here is actually going to change any of the habits uh, at Blow Dry on the other side of the property. Well, that's actually very close to uh, a close walking distance to the, the shopping center on the corner where Blow Dry is. And as I said, the landlord's going to require the tenants to have their employees park in the lot. It's fenced and, in. And they're going to have them, well, it, it's not fenced, it won't be fenced in when, uh, when we add the uh, parcel to it. In other words, the, the subject premises would not be, it would be fenced off from the road. It would only be accessible from the from parking lot. In other words, the employees and the, and the uh, customers would pull into the shopping center from the old from the post road, and the employees would be told to park along the rear of the parking lot. Well, we still know human nature. This 
still going to pop along the road, especially customers, because it's the closest point to A and B. They're not going to pop over. The Why don't they use the parking lot on the other side of the building now and walk all the way across the, to the, the bus right over there? Why are they parking all along over here? Then we have a residential neighborhood. Well, again, I don't go to the shopping center perhaps as often as, uh, as the commissioners do, um, but my understanding from my client is that they are getting complaints from the tenants that the parking lot is filled, you know, frequently during the day at peak hours. Um, Just to, it, yeah, you, you put up the, um, the blue and yellow. Right, right. This, right. This one here. So, and the plan would be to merge, split it, merge the lots this way, and then would the parking still be in the blue side for the building in the yellow? It would be all open. There, there would be a shared parking. There's a shared parking arrangement now. The tenants that are in, uh, in 3377, which is the yellow side of that uh, plan you have there, Mr. Chairman, uh, share the parking lot that's right now that's mostly on uh, the blue side, which is 3355. There's no fencing in the middle, and the existing fencing that's there now would come down and the f a new fence would be erected along the street line of Spruce Street um, in front of the uh, subject premises that we've just acquired, and then it would go up the common boundary line between People's United Bank's vacant lot and, and our property. Here. Correct, yes, mm -hmm. right. And then, so is so somebody parking in this, far, if you're looking at the sheet, all the way to the left, the bottom most parking space on the left? Yes. Can they get out of their car and walk along Spruce Street up to Blow Drive? No, they have to come to go towards uh, the post road. Right, they have to walk out here? And go well, no, there's around. no fencing there. They can just walk. It's a direct shot. There's, they walk across a parking lot like you would at uh, Stop and Shop or right. Home Depot or... Up, up, up on the right side of the building and then around the front and into Road Drive this way, or can they come? They can go in the back also. On the, on the, they can go, come in the back on the other side of the existing fence that's there now. There are some rear doors there on that building. And, and the parking, by the way, out on, in the front of that building is illegal. They're, the people aren't supposed to park there. Those are not stripe spaces. They're not stripe spaces, but people park there, but they're not supposed to. But again, it's because of the the difficulty in having parking now on site. They're creating their own parking spaces. I have to be honest. <laughs> when those spaces are open, I park in the front. And because I, until recently, I thought that those were parking spaces in the front. And um, you park there because that's the closest to the door and if it's open, it's there. Right, but, but there are no signs that say no parking. Yeah, it, I think historically it was allowed. It's over the years it's become illegal, but people still do it. But it's not striped. The intention is what we're trying to do is to get the people to park on site, off street, in the parking lot. Sometimes of the day, certainly some hours of the day, there's plenty of parking, but there are times of the day. You know, I think particularly at night when the restaurants are being occupied, where there is a difficulty in getting parking off street on site. And the landlord doesn't have to do this. The landlord is attempting to accommodate their tenants. And they thought at the same time to alleviate any potential street parking that might have been interfering with the neighbors. Now, again, I wish Mr. Um, uh, Romero had been able to stay around longer because when he came and we explained him what we were doing, he was thrilled about it, particularly the idea that we were going to tell the tenants to make sure their employees are parking off the street and not on Spruce Street. He's having trouble now getting in and out of the driveway making the swing because of the snow piles and then the cars parking next to the snow piles. It's narrowed the street down and his ability to get his cars, he said, in and out of his driveway. Mr. Romero is on the south side of Spruce Street? Yes, um, we marked um, on one of these plans when he was here which house was his. It's the um, it's lot 243 slash 192. And he says that the cars during the day are all the way from the corner all the way down to the subject premises. Yeah, what I, what's happened, he said, is that when Center Street became, was made a one-way street, this street has all of a sudden picked up a lot more traffic. 
and with the cars parking there, it's, it's creating more of a problem. Yeah, the, um, Mr. Chanel uh, calculated that there's approximately 30 employees in the larger building at 3377, I'm sorry, 20, there's 20 employees in the larger building at 3377 Post Road, and there's 10 in the smaller building at 3355, which is the Dunkin' Donut uh, uh, subway building. So there's a total of 30 employees approximately between the two buildings. And, and, and so the, the issue is that employees are parking on Spruce Street and not in the lot. Some employees are parking in the lot, primarily the ones that are uh, down by the sub, that are in the subway uh, uh, Dunkin' Donut building. The other building, which is the larger of the two buildings, that's, those are the employees that are parking on Spruce Street because it's easy for them to walk around the corner and down the street. So, so why is the solution to, to, to pave another parking lot and why not have, why, why not police the employees now parking uh, habits? Make it a two hour parking zone. I mean, I, well. Unfortunately, if we park the employees in the lot. Mike, why don't you come up and identify yourself? And, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. You, you understand the question, right? I do, I mean, uh, uh, just, Karen uh, Wagner. Mike we're Chanella. Trying, we're, trying to, we're trying to create green space and, and walkability and user. <laughs> and, and, and the answer just doesn't seem to be to pave a new parking lot because people are liking to park over there. Right. Yeah, I, I know. I do understand what you're saying. But what we have here is, and I live this every day because I get calls from these uh, tenants all the time. I'm sorry. Can you just put your uh, name I'm on? sorry. Michael Chanella, uh, one of the owners of the centers. Thanks. Um, Mr. Chairman, what we have here is predominantly most of the tenants are restaurants. Along with that came to us Blow Dry, which is a, um, a, a, a boutique for women, and um, it's doing very, very well, creating a lot of patrons coming in. And the problem we're faced with, with all the employees and with the influx of customers, there's just not enough parking. Now, when you go, I'm not sure what time you go, but it may be the time you went everything was fine but unfortunately the most of the day we have problems um, so with that being said with the number of employees and the number of customers coming to the center it's not working out so the the employees are having their people park on Spruce Street to make spaces for the customers and what's happening here is Spruce Street is becoming very very congested with Center Street becoming a one-way street Spruce Street has become kind of a thoroughfare now, a two-way, and it's become very busy. And um, with the snow, it's almost impossible. And I, believe me, I'm there every day. I confess to you, I go to Dunkin' Donuts there every day. So I'm there in the morning, I'm there midday, and in the afternoon. And um, we do have a, a, a serious parking situation here. And like I said, predominantly most of the, patron, uh, most of the um, customers, the tenants, are restaurants, as Jim was saying, the Dunkin' Donuts, the uh, Tabuli Grill, the Subway, the Toscano, and uh, it's created uh, quite a problem there. And that's why we're here tonight. It's um, certainly, I would have loved to have bought the lot and built a house and uh, created more income, more, more value. The problem is, is that we thought the best thing to do with this lot would be to extend the parking for the shopping center, which is short of parking. and. Uh, that kind of explains it. And in the fence situation, I hope you fully have it. It's really a perimeter fence. It's the same quality of fence that's there, but it's a perimeter fence. So anybody parking the new lot just walks right across, right to the front of the store. So it's really not a long walk at all. It's, it's parking in the new lot that we're creating and just walking right to the front door of either uh, Tabuli Grill, uh, Toscano, or the Blow Dry. They can walk right to the front door. They, they don't have to go around a fence or anything no, like that? No, not around a fence, but it, it's, it's certainly a parking lot to the rear of the buildings, right? To the side, to the side of the yeah, building. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you call, know, you'd call it, it is to the side. You park in... Um, and certainly it's human nature that the, the customer wants to pull in front of the store, get out of their car and roll right into the store. That's human nature, but unfortunately all the centers can't, especially one this old, can't quite be that way. So we're trying our best to, you know, accommodate the, the tenants who certainly want to do business and the customers that come and want to shop there. Okay, if there's any other.
Any other questions? Uh, all right. As I said before, we, we think that this does, it is consistent, the request here to change this zone is consistent with your plan of conservation and development. And we think there are several benefits to, to uh, changing the zone for this particular piece of property to allow it to be incorporated into the center. There is no intention to expand the center to build any additional buildings or to expand any of the existing buildings. As I said before, um, my belief is based on the parking count that is there that we would need variances to do that. Um, I don't believe this is spot zoning. Um, I also don't think we have double the number of spaces that we're required to have under your regulations. Now, that's certainly something we can get the precise number for if that would be helpful to the commission in making their decision. We can, um, you know, calculate. We probably have the old records. They may still be available at Town Hall on what the patron areas are in these uh, several restaurants. Um, but but I am, I'm confident that we do not have double the number. And I say I'm confident because of the fact that there is a parking problem at the site. Um, if we had an abundance or double the amount of parking spaces, uh, or even 25% more of the parking spaces than we need, I don't think we'd be happy be having these, uh, these parking issues uh, at, at the center. So I would, I would respectfully request that the commission, you have another question, yeah, Mr. Chairman? Go yeah. ahead when you finish. Respectfully request that the uh, board grant the change of zone and the uh, certificate of zoning compliance to allow us to build the parking lot on, on the property once the zone is changed. Thanks. The, the radius map that you have? This is uh, 500 feet? Uh, yes, yes. And um, notice was sent to all the? Yes, every, every name on the list on the, uh, all the names here, we gave envelopes to the town. Right. And um, uh, what was feedback? And did you get any feedback? Have you spoken to any neighbors? Uh, what, what, yes. I mean, you, you mentioned the neighbor who was here earlier. Yes. But, uh, you know, and I have the letter we submitted, and I have one other one. The um, owner of uh, 3266 Post Road also submitted a letter of support, and the original should be in uh, staff's uh, file, but I do have copies here I can give you. And uh, <clears throat> Jim Went sent to us in the last uh, two days uh, emails that were sent in with some opposition. I don't know whether you want me to rebut those after the rebuttal portion of the presentation, or I can mention now. Yeah. I'm gonna, when we get there, I'll just read the names of the folks that submitted yeah. the emails into the record and see. The, um, so the, feed, the feedback we have besides um, uh, Mr. Romero, who is here and had to leave, um, are the two letters of support that we've submitted. Uh, one from Paulson, Paulson, who is the property owner that's occupying the, uh, has the accounting uh, firm offices uh, at 230, I believe, 230 Spruce Street, who is in support. Um, and they're there by virtue of a variance. Um, and then 3266 uh, Post Road, which is the building where the classic car gallery is. It's across the street from the, uh, kind of diagonally across the street from the uh, uh, Subway uh, Dunkin' Donut building. They're also in, in support of this. Yeah. Apart from the, um, and I forget his name, uh, Romero. Romero. Yeah, he's the only owner occupant on Spruce Street. Everybody else is a tenant. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, of, of all the other residential uh, parcels, did you get any response from anyone else? No. As a matter of fact, all the opposition came from people outside the 500 foot radius. Yeah. All, all. I think there was uh, two. Two. A uh, Mr. Uh, Daly. Tom Daly lives in a condominium, which is more than 500 feet away. And then uh, Mrs. Uh, Cla Clammer, or I believe she lives on Harbor Road, so she's quite a distance away. Um, so there was no uh, other support or opposition that we're aware of, w certainly within the 500-foot uh, radius. Uh, no, no one's complained to us. They sent uh, those two emails to uh, uh, Jim Went uh, to the zoning department. Um, w one of the things I, I, I also would like to just to, to clarify, because there was a statement made that most of Spruce Street is residential. Um, I, I would say if you measure out the frontage on, on uh, Spruce Street, it's, it's pretty fairly split. And if anything, there may be more frontage 
that's in the design commercial district than there, are, there, than there is in the uh, uh, residence district B. Uh, there are five houses, but there's also four commercial uses presently being engaged in, on, uh, by my count, on, uh, on Spruce Street. Because I mean, these are the five residential homes, um, one of which is Mr. Romero's. Um, the, the office building at the corner of Jelliffe Lane and Spruce Street, that is already in the design commercial district. Um, what was formerly known as 280 uh, Spruce Street, which is owned by my client, which is now a parking lot that's fenced in, you know, that's in the design commercial district. The property at the corner is in design commercial, and there's an uh, auto, automobile repair facility uh, on the uh, southerly side of uh, Spruce Street at the corner of Post Road and Spruce Street, which is also in the design commercial. Um, now, Paulsa and Paulsa is in the residence B, as is the property at the rear of, of the uh, People's Bank building. But effectively, the, the, that portion at the, at the uh, north uh, west corner of Jolliffe Lane and Spruce Street is also being used for commercial purposes because it's, it's been incorporated into the use by, um, by People's Bank. So, so really you have our property, our subject premises, and, uh, and the vacant lot owned by People's United Bank on the northerly side are the only two uh, that would potentially be used for residential purposes, notwithstanding the fact that they're in the residence district B. Um, but, but the point, again, I'm trying to make is that I would say it's, it's ha half commercial and half residential right now on, um, on Spruce Street. And, you know, I highly doubt that, that anybody in the near future is going to be building residential uh, buildings on the north side of Spruce Street because, like I said before, it backs up to those commercial uses on, on, um, on Post Road. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll turn now to uh, public comment. And before we uh, hold it open, uh, as was mentioned, uh, we received two uh, emails from the public, one from Ms. Sharon uh, Clammer, K-L-A-M-M-E-R. There's no indication of her address in her email. Uh, and uh, we have another one here, Thomas Daly, uh, in opposition, uh, whose address is 10 Southport Wood Drive, Southport Woods Drive in Southport. Uh, those are in the record. Is there any other member of the public who wishes to be heard on this application? Going once, going twice. Okay. Then, uh, Mr. Quitrell, if you have any uh, rebuttal, now is your time. Otherwise, we as, as uh, Attorney Miller said previously, there's no sense beating a dead horse at this point. So, <laughs> okay. thank you for your time. Very good. Thank you very much.